Let's get speedy by creating an advanced block in Minecraft. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to add a custom advanced block to the game. So similar to the advanced item last time, now we're going to create a custom block class and make an advanced block. And for that, in our block package, right click new a package called custom once again. And in there, right click new Java class. And this is going to be the speedy block because this is going to be a block that is going to make us very speedy. So this extends the block class, making sure that we choose NetMinecraft world level block right here. And then we can once again just hover over this and create constructor matching super. And then everything is already working fine. And we could use this class already, but of course we want some functionality to it. And that's actually two things that we want to add here. One of the things is when the player or just any entity basically is going to walk over this block, we're going to add the movement speed effect to that entity. And then also just a very tiny right click functionality as well. Once again, we can middle mouse button click on the block class and actually take a look at all of the methods that we might be able to override when we have a custom block basically. And as you can see, there is a lot of stuff here Again, there's actually more things in the block class than in the item class. And same with the iForge block. There are even more things to be overridden right here. So there are a lot of things that you can do here. We're first of all going to use the step on method right here. So this is the method that is called when an entity actually walks over this block. And once again, the first thing we need to check is whether or not we are on the servers. We need to do plevel.isClientSide. And then of course negate this with this exclamation mark at the very front here. And then what we want to know is whether or not this entity that is walking on this block is actually a living entity. Because we can only add mob effects, this is what the actual like potion effects are called, to living entities. So we're going to say if the entity instance of living entity. So this is basically checking whether or not this entity is actually a living entity. And then we can say, we can actually cast this. So we can say living entity, which is going to be the entity is equal to the entity dot cast. And then it's going to automatically choose the living entity here because the compiler is smart enough to figure this out. And then what we can say is we can say entity dot add effect. So this is the method to call when you want to add an effect here. And what we want to do is we want to add the new mob effect instance mob effects dot and now you can basically specify which which effect you want to add here and we of course want to add the movement speed effect and then the question is how long should we add it for let's say 200 now this is in ticks that's very important so this would be in 10 seconds basically so the mob that is walking across this block here would get the speed effect for 10 seconds just so that we have it because that is one other thing that a lot of people ask for that is basically the right click method for a block that is going to be called use and the first thing that you will notice is that it sort of has this strike through here now the reason it has this strike through is because it is deprecated so if i middle mouse button click on this and I actually go into the abstract not the abstract furnace block actually i want to go into the block behavior and then i want to go here so as you can see there it is deprecated. What does that mean? Well, usually that means that you should not use this actual method here. However, in this case, we actually can use it because if you have deprecated methods in the block or the item classes, then you can actually use those. You can override them. You cannot, however, call them. So you should never do something like modblocks.speedyblock.use. You shouldn't do that because those methods are called in a particular moment, basically inside of the code but you can override them. So that's a very important thing to note. And here, once again, we're going to basically say that, hey, we have to be on the server. So we say client side. So P level is client side and then negate this with the exclamation mark at the front. And then what's interesting for the use method is this is called twice for basically each hand and is also called twice for being on the client and the server. So in theory, this is called four times. You're going to think of it like that. And what we're going to say is p hand is equal to interaction hand dot main hand. And here we want to call the p player dot send message. So once again, it's just sending a message to the actual chat. And this is going to be once again, a new text component. And this is going to be hello, I have been right clicked. So just 
that we know that this block has been right clicked. And then we also need to add the util.nil UUID right here. So making sure that this all works. And this is then output to the actual player's chat when we right click this block. So those are two examples of methods that you can override. Once again, you can just write in override right here and actually see all of the possible methods that you can override. And as you can see, there are so many methods in here. It's actually pretty insane. And once again, the best thing to do is just to be, well, experiment a little bit, try out a few things, try out how some of those methods work and just learn that way. I can definitely advise to do that. Now we of course also need to register this block. So in our mod blocks class, we can take the titanium ore here and just copy it over quickly. And then what we're going to do is create the speedy underscore block. And this is of course the same with the name speedy underscore block here. And then very important that we create a new speedy block here instead of a new block. That's very important that we think about this and the rest here actually in my mind can stay. Maybe we're going to make the strength a little bit less, something like five. But overall, that is fine. Now, of course, we have a block, but we will also need a block states JSON. We'll actually copy this over. Everything like this is, of course, available in the description below, either in the GitHub repository or in individual gists as well. This is simply a normal block states JSON once again. And then for the block and the item model, we're also actually not having anything particularly crazy here. This is just once again a normal block model that we've seen previously already. And with the item model pretty much the same, it simply refers it back to the block model that we've just copied in. So those are basically the three models here. But once again, of course, you can also copy those over from the gists or the GitHub repository as well. And what is also available there is the speedy block texture. So I'm going to copy this over as well. And then all of those have been done. The last thing, of course, being the translation, not to forget that as well. And we can just copy over this one right here and say speedy underscore block. And then this is, of course, the speedy block. There you go. And now, after everything has been added here, let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft once more. And as you can see, the block has been successfully added to the game. And let's just see if I jump over it, then you can see I am actually getting the effect as you can see the speed effect. Now this is just because I'm continuously standing on it. So I'm continuously having the effect applied. But once I'm off of the actual block, then you can see it slowly starts ticking down. So this could be a really cool block for like a custom map, you know, like a jumping puzzle map. And if I actually put a sheep on it, then you can see that the sheep also all of a sudden has speed applied to it as well. So that works because the sheep is of course a living entity and you might already have seen it. If I right click the block, you get the hello, I have been right clicked output into the chat. So pretty much exactly what we've done. What's very important here is because this is a normal block, if I actually were to, for example, place it in this direction, it's always going to face in this direction. The texture here is sort of determined already, so that is something to keep in mind. However, we are actually going to see in a future tutorial how to basically rotate those textures around as well. Right, and with that, we're already at the end of this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.